Hello, Melvin. Uh, I am so sorry, Melvin, that I could not post uh, the answers to the question that was been put in the forum. You know that after USA, when I landed in India, I was in quarantine. I was, you know, I was in my home. So just now, I managed to, you know, shoot uh, the video for you. So uh, now, taking up the questions. The first question was, uh, there a question that had the upper limit that we could extract, like uh, on an average. Uh, in our experience what we see that in the first pass in first go you can go up to like 3000 grafts and uh, in a total of maybe you know 6000 grafts are the total that we could extract from the donor area over time over the lifetime so a bank of almost 6000 grafts maybe 6500 grafts depending on the size of the skull surface area uh, we can have that much and uh, whether to use that and we try to do it in a multiple settings not in one setting and i know some doctors they do it like they extract a lot of grafts in one go somehow uh, we don't do that so that's the first question second question was about uh, exosomes so what is our ex experience uh, no not at all we don't we don't have any experience exo exosomes yet and uh, anything exosomes, PRP, uh, plat, you know, anything that will be kind of helping the hair to survive or you know, kind of, you know, uh, will, will work like a manure. It cannot give a new hair. It cannot produce a new hair. So hair transplantation is going to stay for sure. Either you have to clone a new hair, like you, know, you have to create some new hair, or the existing hair to be protected by finasteride, minoxidil or PRP and exosomes so but exosomes we don't have an experience and I don't believe that it is going to replace hair transplantation ever in principle what are the punch systems that we use and sizes uh, we have uh, almost all the systems of the punches we have got uh, the safe system we have got the you know coal system PCID we have also uh, got uh, the trumpet punches from uh, you know De Broy and as well as uh, Trivellini so we use the size varies from 0.75 to 0 0.95 0 0.75 we use on the you know if you take graft from the beard and on an average 0 0.85 and 0 0.9 mm are enough to take a graft from the back without you know causing any transactions uh, so that's it <coughs> the thickness of the punch we use the thinnest punch possible so that the wound created is very very small so that is very important and uh, somehow our wounds uh, heal very fast uh, we use what uh, what we use for creating incisors we use uh, uh, mostly uh, you know needles 19 gauge needle or 20 gauge 20 21 gauge needle for the hairline and sometimes we use cut to size blades when you have to do really in between hair so when we do uh, female and uh, uh, you know we have got a lot of hair we have to uh, augment the density we use cut to size blades how do they manage depth control with grafts and do the incision sites vary by follicular grouping so we use uh, dull leaded implanters so already the slits are being pre-made and what you know the depth of the incision is you know guided by the average hair follicle uh, you know length so initially we take some around 6 to 10 grafts test grafts from random areas and see what is an average uh, graft length so uh, in our experience what we have seen is if somebody is very tall then uh, it is more often uh, that the grafts are also longer so anyway we measure measure and uh, accordingly we make uh, the you know slit the depth of the slit and then we have got cut to the then you have got a pre made uh, in the pre made sites we use the implanter dull needle implanter so the dull needle uh, the loaded implanter goes inside the you know hole and unloads the graft so while unloading we look at uh, the thing that the epidermis or the skin part of the graft shoulders over the recipient skin that means goes for a snugly fit kind of arrangement so that the graft is not very up not very down so you know it snugly fits and that creates the re-epithelization very smooth and it becomes very difficult for uh, us even to make out whether uh, the graft is transplanted or natural hair
so uh, that's it and uh, do they trim their grafts no we never trim the grafts because we believe like you know more tissue around the graft is better for the graft to get that cushion or the get that uh, kind of extra life through that tissue around them to survive in a new environment so we never trim the grafts so uh, this saying like patients with challenging cases the dark thick hair and uh, yeah scattered singles in the front yes so if really there is no need of a transplant even the patient is pressing us we don't take him for a procedure we try to manage him with medications and uh, we do when the you know, temples are receded and you know when the forehead looks very big we try to do uh, the temples for sure but not in routine uh, thing if it is not required we don't do it uh, on the front around 500 single grafts on an average 600 maybe sometimes we require single grafts to create the naturalness placed in irregular fashion and what we do is if you do definitely we don't get enough singles from the back the extraction we take uh, the thinner lighter and slow growing hair follicles from the behind and we have a magnification systems up to 50 50 magnification system like you know 50x and 100x and under the, uh, the that kind of a huge magnification we try to dissect them into single follicles and we use them so that is very routine to us using magnification systems and you know uh, dissecting uh, the double and triple follicles into single follicles and plant them as soon as possible on the hairline do they regularly split multi hair graft to uh, yeah so we regularly do uh, splitting the multi hair graft for sure uh, body hair edema so yeah so the, from wherever you will take the grafts that area will have little bit of edema for sure and uh, let me tell you we don't use much of the body hair we take mostly beard we don't go into chest and other areas but because we believe that you know the ha hair from the other areas they are not that good in terms of like you know, survival and the longevity so you know uh, somehow we don't uh, do that because we don't believe in them we just try to manage everything by scalp or by beard <laughs> At what is your hair loss pattern mostly set? Yeah, the question is yes. Uh, like if you have really crossed 40, the chances that you will have a different pattern of baldness after 40 is very very less. You know, you can really foresee the doctors with experience. They can foresee what is going to happen to that patient when he comes around 40. So I believe after 50, there is no chance of progression of the baldness. So you know, accordingly we manage the case. How exactly DHT different in FUE? So DHT is basically a very refined version of FUE wherein uh, those grafts enter into the body very fast. It is called direct hair transplant wherein we make the slits first and so that the slits are ready to receive the grafts then we extract the grafts and plant them simultaneously. So it is kind of you know direct hair transplant. The graft stay outside the body for not more than 10 to 15 minutes. So you know since the grafts are fresh and entering into the body and least uh, kind of uh, ischemia or time outside the body for the grafts uh, they don't enter through a sock stage mostly and most of the grafts they get an get anchored and uh, it is more often than not that we see that the grafts are growing directly so that kind of phenomenon happens in direct hair transplantation uh, we have uh, invented that and published that in 2013 and uh, we have not patented that we have just registered that the name but uh, since we have published it uh, for the general, you know, all over the world people are using the technique and some people name it a DHT, some people name something else but the concept was for the first time published by us, me uh, and Dr. Arika. Uh, thank you so much Melvin, uh, you know, if people have more questions they are free to ask me questions and I will be ready to answer them. Thank you so much. Stay safe, stay at home, don't go out. Thank you. Thank you.